what we're going to talk about in today's lecture is the concept of the circular flow model. Now the circular flow model, in this case the two sector flow, is the most basic form of illustration of economic activity. So what the circular flow does it is that it illustrates economic activity in a diagram. Now for the circular flow model we're just going to look at two sectors. We're going to look at the household sector and we're going to look at the business sector. And we're going to assume that this business sector is domestic businesses. So this doesn't include any overseas firms. It just only includes Australian owned businesses. Okay. So we're going to look at the flow of economic activities between the households and businesses. So initially to produce certain goods and services we'll have flow one. And flow one shows how firms sell their resources or households sell their resources to businesses. So the flow of one is the flow of productive resources. We're just going to chuck all the flows up here. The so flow of productive resources. So the households offer to the firms land, labor, and capital. And as we know from supply side analysis, we need land, labor, and capital to actually produce goods and services. So this is what the households provide to businesses in the form of land, labor, and capital. That land looks a bit unclear. Let's just rewrite this. Sorry, guys. So land, labor, and capital. And so, of course, in the perfect market or in the market economy, businesses have to buy this land, labor, and capital. So flow two naturally becomes the incomes paid to, the, to these households. So flow two. becomes incomes paid. So we have flow two. And this is the flow of incomes. So when the businesses purchase the land, labor, and capital from households, they must actually pay the households money. And that's how the market economy works. They have to pay money to get something. So flow two. Land, labor, and capital. And so what the households can do with this land labor or this, this flow of incomes to the households is spend it. And so what we're assuming in the two sector model is that there is no financial sector and businesses don't or households don't actually save their money. So they spend everything they get. So that's flow three is actually the total expenditure or aggregate demand. In an economy or aggregate demand. So, what this means is that the households provide businesses with resources. What the businesses do with the resources is that they have to pay back the households for offering up their land, labor, and capital resources in the flow of incomes. And what the households do with the incomes is that they spend their, their, all their incomes in order to increase their material living standards. And this is the total flow or expenditure. And finally, we have the last flow, which is the flow of productive final goods and services. So we have flow four, which is the flow of final goods and services. Now, it is important to note that the word final means consumable goods and services. It doesn't mean intermediate goods and services. So what this word final means, for example, is that if you have, say, peanut butter, the ingredients required to purchase peanut butter or to make peanut butter, let's assume uh, peanuts and oil. So peanuts and oil, they are not included in flow four because they're not final goods and services ready to consume. They're actually intermediate goods. And so the final goods and services that is recorded in this flow four is actually the peanut butter itself. And so as we can see that aggregate demand in this economy, in this close two sector economy, equals C.
there is no investment expenditure because there is no savings in the economy and you require savings to invest so in this economy in this two sector closed economy the aggregate demand is only C okay so let's recap the idea of the circular flow model so firstly we have the first flow which is a flow of productive resources the flow of productive resources suggests that the household sector supplies or makes available resources for use by the business sector so land labor and capital so to purchase these resources businesses have to actually pay households income and so the second flow is the uh, is the flow of income so businesses the business sector purchases or demands resources by paying so by paying households different incomes and this is where income comes from and now in the two sector model the third flow represents the total expenditure or aggregate demand of the economy so when the consumers or the households receive their payments or their incomes they're going to spend all their incomes in order to um, satiate or to improve their material living standards so in this case aggregate demand is just consumption expenditure okay and the, so when they spend their um, incomes in total expenditure or aggregate demand in the economy which in this case in the two sector model is only C the businesses in fact would have to supply goods and services and so the last flow in the two sector model is the flow of final goods and services so this reflects the overall level of economic activity and is commonly measured by GDP so this is GDP so that's an illustration of how economic activity occurs in a two sector closed economy model and this is the two sector circular flow model in the next lecture we'll talk about how a five sector circular flow model can make this process a little bit more complicated and a little bit more realistic in the general idea of or the general concept of an open economy